Hello to everyone watching this video. It's Leviathan here again, and to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. I'm sorry for any inadvertent circumstances that's been going on lately. I'm just, I just had my 10th anniversary celebration on Thursday. And there's a surprise at the end of this video that I will need to explain to you to help you guys feel more aware of what's going to supposedly going to come by. For this video, I have three things to introduce to you guys. Like, like a hero, a creature, like two heroes, and a species, I believe, as far as I know. I'm, I just hope this is all worth it for you guys. And I hope this all works. If you guys bear with me, I'm going to introduce them to you. Vanity. Real name, Vivian Mikeson. Height, 5 feet 9 inches. Weight, 152 pounds. Status, hero in Master of Mirrors. Base, default, Earth, mobile. Intelligence, 3 brains. Behavior. Intellectual, sneaky, and competent. She enjoys tricking her opponents. Lethality. Only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses. Broken mirrors. She has no healing factor. Powers. She could travel in reflective surfaces, trap her opponents in mirrors, duplicate herself using her reflections, and other mirror-based capabilities. She later developed some martial arts skills. Eyes bright blue, hair deep gold and wavy. Origin. Vivian Mikeson was an average woman who admired her vanity. One stormy night, Vivian was attacked and almost killed by Electrica, who zapped her with lightning and knocked her onto a wall mirror. When she came to, she found that she developed some reflection-based powers and eventually helped Madame Shear defeat Tyranitar by trapping her inside a mirror. Earning the name Vanity, Vivian would nowadays spend time putting her new powers to good use. Costume. She wears a variety of casual clothes. Teams. Solitary, with Madame Shear, and other heroes. Original inspiration, DC's Mirror Master. The next character I'm going to introduce is an affiliation with Warp Goat and Warp Boy and such. This is Warp Girl. Real name, Rebecca Nigels. Height, 6 feet 3 inches. Weight, 166 pounds. Status, hero, and younger sister of mystery. Base, 2 Earths, mobile. Intelligence, 3 brains. Behavior, loving and willful. She always enjoys putting her powers to use. Lethality, only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses, she has no healing factor. She's also a horrible fighter. Powers. She has the power to make others think that she's warping herself and other objects into agonizing shapes. She also has uncanny reasoning skills. Eyes, green and blue, hair, deep auburn, and a ponytail. Origin. Rebecca Nigels was an average woman who learned that her older sister became the heroic mystery. Wanting to follow her first steps, Rebecca visited the Vortress of Heroism where Pym gave her the power of visually warping herself and others. Naming herself Warp Girl, Rebecca helped Mystery win a battle against her evil counterpart, Madame Impossible. Since then, Warp Girl was marked as a hero and later became the wife of Warp Goat and the mother of Warp Boy. Costume. She simply wears nothing official, just she dresses and wears whatever she feels like. Teams, Solitary, with Mystery, and other heroes. Old Inspiration, Optical Disturbances. This is the last thing I'll introduce in my video, so I hope you guys could bear with me. X-Flyers. Real name, Inapplicable. Height and weight, Vary. Status, Villain, and Creation of Dr. Scream. Base, Mobile. Intelligence, Two Brains. Behavior, Savage and Merciless. They always hunt for blood and brains. Lethality. Utterly lethal, but worse when in groups. Weaknesses. Salt, fire, and cranial damage. Powers. 
They have all Quetzalcoatlus based powers, along with all zombie based powers. They also have strong healing factors, along with traveling in swarms. Eyes deep black in varied numbers, hair varied. Origin. After getting the inspiration from the undead pterosaurs of Zolid, Dr. Scream decided to create an army of all variations of undead Quetzalcoatl, naming them the X-Flyers. Scream commanded them to start attacking Johannesburg until Dentrini showed up. Eventually, Dentrini decided to change into Maximum Dentrini in order to destroy the Horde. Outraged of this event, Dr. Scream decided to recover the X-Flyers for future attempts. Costume, none. Team, solitary, for Dr. Scream and other creatures. Order installation, zombies and Quetzalcoatl. Well, those are the three things I have to introduce, and as I promised, like during the uh, the tenth anniversary celebration, um, I had a video recording of me interacting with my relatives, whether it be my mom, my dad, my dad's parents, um, and all of my relatives on my dad's side of the family. And I'm going to need some help from my uncle Mike to be able to post that video onto my podcast, so you guys could see the event as well, and I hope it would help with social recognition because you guys would then see me interact with relatives, and therefore I would be more relatable in a sense, because from what I was told from one of my brothers, I have a lot in terms of comprehensible, but the one thing I need to pay attention to is relatable, if that makes any sense. If you guys want, you could... Like, subscribe, comment down below, and share if you want. It's your choice. And I hope you guys have a fine rest of the day, a fine rest of the month and such. And until next time, in transmission.